Welcome to the counselor tutorial for managing your to-do list. In this tutorial, we're going to review the process where you can set up tasks uh, for yourself, for other people, for multiple people, and show how those tasks can be related specific to a patient or generic, and then how those tasks are tracked going forward. So when you think of the to-do list in counselor, you can think of really task management. The focus here is to replace the need for post notes, for verbal reminders, the, hey, can you call this patient for me type of activities, uh, and keep that all in a highly trackable place, not only uh, until that task is completed, but going forward as well, to look backwards and see what happened. All right, so we're gonna start here in a patient profile and just show very specifically in the patient profile, uh, they do have a to-do list area. Uh, this is where you can see any tasks they have that are not yet completed. This is where you can see any previous tasks that have been completed. Okay, uh, it's also important to note that when tasks are completed, notes are added to the patient notes section as well. So you can see it here. You can also see it down here as well. Um, this is also an area where of course you can launch new tasks. Okay, uh, so very, very flexible overall, um, right within the patient profile. Uh, there's also the task feature up in the top right hand corner, the to-do list feature. This is where you can see your task list at any time. So regardless of which screen you're in in Counselor, you can view your own personal task list as well as create tasks for yourself, for other people, etc. Uh, there's also the ability from the dashboard to view your task list. So let's have a look at that. Uh, it is called the to-do list task not complete widget. This gives the ability to see any tasks that are overdue, that are due today, that are due in the future. So you can click through those. So this is a very heavily used uh, dashboard widget because uh, it helps you see the information you need right away and then ideally monitor and take care of that task. You'll notice there's also a little plus symbol uh, to the right here where you can add a task. Okay, so as I mentioned, you can see your, this information from within the patient profile. You can see it from in the top right hand corner. You can also see it from the dashboard. From, uh, for, for administrators on this call, for clinic owners on this call, you also can see this information within the to-do list task reporting feature. So if you're gonna see the task across the entire practice uh, for multiple people, maybe you have someone who's gonna be out with uh, a knee surgery for two weeks, and so you need to reassign their tasks. You can go into the to-do list task and take care of that, or to the to-do task reporting area and take care of that. All right, so let's focus on kind of the <clears throat> the nuts and bolts of this, how you'd create a task and how you'd manage a task. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into Jim's profile, okay? As I mentioned, you can create tasks anytime, but I'm gonna do this directly from within a patient profile. Um, you could do this, of course, if you were working on an invoice or if you're in a patient visit and something popped to mind, you can always just click up here in the top right hand corner, counselor will know right away. <clears throat> when you click on new task, it'll know who you're talking about. Okay, so because we're in Jim's profile, whether we're in his patient administration screen or taking a payment in an invoice or creating a chart note within the patient visit screen, it would know we're talking about Jim Arthur. Now, you of course could remove this if you just had a, a thought, hey, I need to create a task for myself really quickly that I want to order uh, batteries, right? Just really simple, order batteries, right? And you're gonna assign it to yourself. So here I'm logged in as Kate. So Kate's gonna assign this to herself and say, by the end of the day, I need to order more batteries, right? Quick, easy uh, task creation. And now you can see it's added to Kate's task list, okay? In the My Task tab. Um, and then of course, then Kate goes ahead and orders the batteries and completes, right? And now it's taken off of the active list. Uh, but even though, so even though we were in uh, uh, Jim Arthur's profile, we we're able to create tasks for whoever or for whatever we need to do so. Okay, so very, very flexible. Now, once again, let's look at another specific example right within uh, this patient's profile. Let's just say, for example, that we um, received a repair back and we need to check it, or we checked it in and we need to call the patient. Okay, so we check in the devices and then we uh, go ahead and create a task. We need someone else to call. Now it's important to note that these can be uh, completed by people in different locations, right? So if you do have multiple locations or somebody's working from home, the whole beauty of this of course is it's all HIPAA compliant. Anybody can see it from wherever they log in. So you could just create tasks for anyone, anywhere, for whatever reason, okay? All right, so we're gonna say by the end of today, uh, this is high priority, we rushed these repairs. I need Linda to contact Jim and of course you can have all kinds of different options here. Uh, counselor does can preset with a lot of these, uh, but you can set up your own templates however you wish. Let's say in this example, we need repair pickup with an appointment and there's going to be a charge. 
All right, what we'll see here is that counter will fill the text in and it's going to put in placeholders. This is all part of the template of that task, um, that, that task template. And so it'll automatically fill in, in this case, the patient's name and phone number along with a specific language. Now, in this case, I want to add a little extra detail just to make that call easier, right? So that when Linda makes the call, she knows who to call, how to call them, what needs to be done, and any notes that she needs to tell the patient on the fly. Because a lot of this is just about specific communication amongst the team. There's no, po there's no post notes, nothing's written down. I didn't have to say this to Linda and she had to remember it, right? We can just create the task and then it's trackable. But let's give an example here of a time where maybe it didn't go as fluidly. Obviously, hopefully we make that first call, reach out to the patient and we complete the task. That's certainly the goal, but it doesn't always work out that way. So let's say uh, Linda calls the patient today and she doesn't get through, right? So she goes ahead and she makes a note that says that she left a message on voicemail. Okay. All right. Now here's the challenge. Linda is not in tomorrow. So what do we do? Well, we're going to go ahead and move this. We're going to say, okay, let's take this from Linda to Kirsten. And by the way, you can have multiple people assigned to the same task. So if you ever need to, you can certainly do that as well. But let's just keep this focused on one person at a time. So we'll say that Kirsten is now going to lead this uh, regarding this task. Kirsten may not know that, and that's perfectly fine, right? Kirsten will then just see this on her task list. And so now she reaches out to the patient tomorrow. Okay, and she actually gets through and finds out that the patient uh, will be on vacation. Let's just give until the, the start of the year here. So let's say uh, January 3rd is coming back. Okay, so now Kirsten makes that note. And instead of leaving this task just kind of hanging as, you know, past due, what Kirsten says, okay, well, let's go ahead, be proactive here and move this out to January 3rd. Okay, maybe she leaves herself as the, the, point, the, the point person on this or she changed it over, that's fine. But point being is that this is all being tracked. So if I was the person who, let's say, checked in the devices, frequently what I would do personally is I would look at the shelf of repairs and say, gosh, why haven't we you know, contacted that patient? That's really strange. And I would start asking around. And a lot of people are trying to figure out, did we call him? Did we not call him? What happened? Instead, you simply can just look and see. All right, we contacted the patient on the 21st, left message on voicemail. We contacted him on the 22nd. Turns out he's gonna be out until January 3rd. We went and had moved the task out without knowing anything that happened. I can look at this and know exactly what happened right away. Okay, so this pays dividends right away. It also can be very helpful down the road. So if you ever have any confusion, either on the patient side or within your staff as to what's happened within a specific task, you can always jump, in this case, because it's related to a patient, you can always jump directly into the patient's profile and see that information. Even if it's two years down the road and a question comes up about that process by which you contacted the patient, um, you can look back and see those notes right away. So this is actually essentially a form of communication within the system where you're creating tasks, you're tracking them, you're keeping your team on the same page. So once again, the task creation is very, very flexible. You can do that within a patient profile. You can launch that from up here or from the dashboard. Tasks can cover the wide range of anything that you would that you need to remember. It can be as simple as remember to get milk and bread on the way home, right? You create a task for yourself to make sure you do that or as detailed as something specific for a patient. Okay, so there's a lot of different tools that you can use for these purposes. Of course, if you have any questions about how to manage your tasks, please give us a call, email us, live chat us. We are always happy to help. And thank you for joining us for the tutorial for managing your to-do list.